What's up YouTube, this is Hill Phantom. I'm back with a quick three month review of Starlink Internet System by the great Elon Musk. And just giving you some feedback on my experiences over the past three months of living with and working with and gaming with and playing with Starlink. So with that, let's get right into it. Let's talk about the build crop quality. I did an unboxing video. I'll link that down below as well as all these subjects I'm talking about. You can take a look at exactly how, well, great this is built. I really like the engineering and I expect nothing less from a space going company. This thing looks good, but it also functions quite well. I live in a very snowy environment. I'm in Montana. One of the things I really like is they've actually made the dishy heated. Now, if you aren't familiar with the term dishy, that's what we lovingly call the actual dish of the Starlink that goes in your yard, on top of your house, wherever you choose to mount it. Now, it has passive heat, so what that does is it harvests heat some way and some special sauce. I don't know, I'm not that tech when it comes to the build, but it actually defrosts the satellite dish itself, so I haven't noticed any snow or anything sticking to it. I also went ahead and mounted the satellite on top of my roof using the volcano mount. That mount also seems sturdy. So all in all, I really like the build quality from the dish to the mount on through the 100 foot cord down into the modem itself and the modem is really slick looking it's really sturdy looking it feels really good all in all i'm just going to say this is about a 10 out of 10 for what i've seen uh, for internet systems uh, in terms of build quality so good on the folks and the engineers i expect nothing less from people who build rocket ships yes i would recommend it on the build quality uh, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, the mount install the setup so i chose to actually mount it on top of my roof before we go into all those specifics I, again i have links down below to where you can look at what i did and how i chose and where i chose to mount it on my roof and actually what i did and some things i changed from the instruction sets just to make sure that it was sealed up quite nicely i also got a lot of great feedback from some of my viewers on what i need to do people that are used to being up on the roof where i'm not it's my first time drilling into a roof so quite nervous but i was able to get it done and from what i understand did a pretty decent job. Uh, we'll be going up there and checking on it quite a bit, uh, but uh, again, it's on top of the roof. But how I came to that conclusion is something I want to share with you guys and stress big time is I actually sat the satellite system around my house just on a little patio table to figure out where I got the best speeds. And there was a huge difference. So I really encourage you all to take some time with your satellite system, move it around the yard before you decide where to permanently mount it. Now I put it on top of the roof because I got two crazy Australian shepherds that like to chew things right now that are puppies so I wanted to get up and out of the way I actually had to put it back towards the back of my uh, roof line because of my HOA restrictions so I had a lot of questions about that uh, but I was glad to get it up there and I was really glad that I took the time to leave it in place for three days do some speed tests see how it worked out take a look at latency um, do it at different times of the day so I can make sure that there's no issue where no matter what arc the satellites on so I found a um, need to do that and I'm really glad I did and I re recommend you guys doing that. Now what I did is I put it on top of the roof and again I fished it through an outside receptacle. You can take a look at that here. Uh, and basically all I did was come through the wall from the outside receptacle since there was already something cut into my house. I didn't want to drill into my house. So I just used that. Yes, I know it's not up to code. You should get a person to do it that is qualified uh, and make sure it is up to code. Don't do what I did, but this is what I chose to do. So let's go. Now I brought it through to my office and then I just hooked it up to the modem. That is pretty straightforward for anyone who set up any type of internet system. Now, the software it comes with or the application. You download the application, you set up the uh, internet itself. Remember this is all PoE, so it goes power uh, from your wall into a power brick and then does power over ethernet to power both the modem as well as the satellite itself. So I uh, brought that in, put it together, clicked on the application and walked through the setup. Now, you know, again, I've been in IT for 20 plus years. Anyone can set this up, just follow the prompts. And as long as you know things like SSID and understand how that works on a very basic level, I think you'll be just fine. And I found that that part of the um, system was pretty rock solid as well. I like the application. So now what does everybody want to know? Three months of living with this, what are my speeds like? So I can tell you that they're pretty good and they're above what they're advertised. So I'm gonna talk in kind of a couple different ways. One, I'm gonna talk about um, what I'm getting on the high side of things and then what I'm getting on an average. Now the low side of things, I'll talk about a little bit more when I talk about drops, um, but 
you know, again, this is this is a pretty good system, and, and I like to speak in averages because you are going to have those extreme lows that I tend to throw out. Now, my testing, uh, basically for three months, I did a speed test in the morning. I missed a few days, but I definitely did a majority of the days. I did a speed test in the morning, a speed test in the afternoon, and a speed test in the evening under all different types of weather sets, and I came up with these numbers. So for download, which everybody wants to know, my average was 114. Now I've seen spikes as high as 190. Uh, and of course I've seen them go as low as zero to the tens, but they don't last long. So on average, I'm getting about 114. Now he advertises 100, um, you know, again, so I'm going, I'm getting over that and you know, they're promising speeds up to 200 as soon as the network gets mature. Now, what about uploads? Uploads, I'm getting an average of 18. I can see it spike as high as 50 sometimes, uh, but that average remains at 18. And then of course, what about my ping or my latency? So my latency average was 38. I've seen it as high as into the 90s and bad days. And then um, I've seen, you know, as low as, you know, 15, 20, uh, but the average has been 38 for me. What? about drops. So remember, this is a satellite system. This is not your cable system. This is not a fiber system. This is not hardwired in. You're getting your internet over the airways, if you will. Okay, so there's going to be things and a lot of different variables that can cause problems. Now, when I think about drops, I do have intermittent drops. Um, do I have them every day? No. Do I have them every other day? Yes. Are they small and short-lived? Absolutely. Have I experienced any outages on the network whatsoever? No, I have not. Do I have two networks? Yes, I do have two networks, one hardwired and this as a redundant backup system. Now you're going to have these drops no matter what you do, no matter uh, what Elon does, no matter how good this gets, no matter how many satellite um, they put in the sky or put into lower space we're still gonna have some issues because it is satellite and there's variables with weather. Now I will say, um, with weather and a bunch of other things, but I will say in specific to weather, like we've had snow here, we've had cloudy days, maybe notice a little bit of lag, maybe some more drops, um, but you know, in a slow, slightly slower speeds, uh, but overall, overall it's been quite solid. When I compare this to something like HughesNet or anything else, and not hardwired in, this is night and day. So while I am being a little, picky about it and saying you're going to experience these drops. Um, understand it's still best in breed. Understand it's still amazing what they've accomplished and I can only see it getting better. Now those drops, what do I mean by those? So let's say I have 10 meetings in 10 days. One of those meetings will be plagued with a drop or two. And by that drop, it might last a couple seconds. I've never had a drop last over, you know, a minute, if you will. But when you're doing VC and in my line of work, I own an IT company, I communicate with my employees this way, my clients, my vendors, some of my partnerships. Uh, again, you know, I don't know if I can rely on it completely for very important meetings. I don't mind relying on it for internal staff meetings because we can get through some drops. But again, um, I think it's it's pretty good. Now with gamers in specific, now your latency is okay. I mean, it's under 50, which, you know, again, an average of 38 isn't great, it isn't horrible. However, I'm a casual gamer. This is perfect for me. I don't care if it drops and then it comes back and I'm, I'm laying there, um, you know, virtually dead on the battlefield. That doesn't bother me. Some people, you know, they take a lot of self-worth. So I would not recommend this for gaming if you're a serious person. If you're an average gamer or uh, just a casual gamer like myself, it's been good. Um, I can't say anything negative about it other than drops here and there. Um, and again, if we're looking at maybe one drop every 10 days for my meetings, um, but I will notice that that's just in the meetings and, and that's playing games. I, I will often say I'll be watching YouTube or something and I'll notice a little stutter or whatever, but again, I'm not willing to pin that all the way on the satellite um, because there's just so many variables that, that it could be, whether that's a weather event or whether that's just a network event uh, or whether it's on the other side, what if it's on Google side. So, you know, I don't always investigate it, but they're so small, literally very, very small. You don't have to worry about these long drops and I haven't had any outages. So with the zero outages, I'm, I'm just pretty darn impressed. And yes, you're gonna have drops, but remember what we're dealing with, satellite. In conclusion, would I recommend this? Absolutely, I would recommend this. This is a great platform, um, unless your job requires it. Unless you're a super crazy cool gamer, your name's Ninja, and you're killing it and making millions of dollars, no. But, or you get self-worth from games, or you just, you know, it's a serious hobby of yours. I wouldn't recommend this for that. For an everyday usage, yes, I think it's great. Now, we have three people in this household using it, and streaming, and playing games, and everything else. And when I do have them all on the network, of course, we're gonna feel a little 
little bit of slowdown. Uh, but because I have this other network, what I've done is chosen to use this as redundant. I have some of my IoT solutions hooked up through um, satellite because it doesn't need to be that mission critical for me and my purposes of what I'm using IoT for. Uh, but when I do have an important meeting or I want to get crazy on Fortnite, then I will um, certainly wire into my cable platform because you know it's just overall a bit more reliable but not because of the tech well because of the technology and also not because you get it it's not hardwired we don't have a hardwire we're running over the airwaves you're going to see some drops i would love to take this mobily that's one of my um you know kind of things against this if you will is that i can't yet be untethered take this into uh, the backcountry or take this on my rv uh, i just can't do that yet so uh, from my standpoint that kind of stinks because i think that that would be a huge future for this is being able to go wherever um, but overall in everyday use um, you know for someone who doesn't need that mission critical stuff who can or that can just be okay and not get frustrated that you know every once in a while you're gonna have these small less than a few second drops um, but again that can be really annoying on you know zoom or google meets or you know whatever you end up using for vc uh, and then again once again for games not a good feeling for anyone when you are lining someone up and then you're dead all of a sudden because you had hiccups and latency. So uh, overall, I really would recommend this, especially to folks that don't have any other solutions. Uh, if you are like me and looking for just a redundant backup or to put your IoT solutions on, I think it's great. As an everyday driver, it really just depends on how heavy you are uh, in terms of internet use and in terms of how many people you have in your house and in terms of, uh, you know, are you doing a lot of meetings that it's mission critical or are you a huge gamer? Are you going to hear from your kids if, you know, they keep getting shot because, you know, you're streaming Netflix and your wife is, you know, watching something on Bravo and, uh, you know, whatever. So um, just keep that in mind. It is what it is. So I don't want the fanboys to flame me too bad, um, but I just have to be honest in saying it's not 100% ideal for a full use internet or full spectrum internet usage, um, but it's absolutely amazing. And if you can't get anything else, there is nothing in this realm that compares to a HughesNet, nothing, microwaves, point to point, any of that stuff. So far in my humble experience, I have I don't think there's, this is best in class by far. So my hat's off to those folks over at Starlink and I'll continue to do some updates as I see it down the road. Keep your questions coming as well, uh, but I'll continue to um, do these updates and I appreciate you guys watching uh, and taking an interest into Starlink. I think it's a good solution and I certainly look forward to see what they do next. Till next time, I'm Hill Phantom. Let's go.